I forgot again, but now I didn't forget again. Okay, I'm going to mute everyone, and then I'll, I, I'm going to share with you uh, my my weekly. Uh, okay, muted. Okay, uh, so I'm going to finish off ten of the week uh, tomorrow. Mitzvah will do uh, pre Shabbos hopefully, and um, but uh, finish off the chizik for this week on the topic of Beres Kainim again. I'm still fixed on it. A lot of thoughts came to my mind this week, and um, I was thinking. I was thinking, first of all, as follows, you know, it, it occurred to me, and, uh, you know, if, if you would have an opportunity to, um, to get an appointment with Herb Chaim Kanevsky, to get and sit with him with a personal bracha, and he would give you personal bracha, you'd probably pay a lot of money, you'd travel far or wide, you'd be excited, you'd think, what's he going to give me a bracha and all that, and you'd be all excited to get a bracha from him. And the truth is, we, we make a mistake, and we think, the Berus Kainim is God telling the Kainim to bless, and they're blessing at his behest, but it's really they are the ones giving the bracha at the behest of Hashem. But the Rambam says not like that. The Rambam says that, um, you know, he says, don't, don't think for a minute that, you know, you, you go to hear Berus Kainim and a bunch of, I mean, we, we happen to have a shul filled of Kayhan Udaylam. You know, we have a color, so many Kayhan Udaylam. But, you know, it's a simple Kayhan who does, it could be an Amaretz. Like, so Ram says, don't, don't be perturbed by that because they're not ones giving the, the bracha. They're just a vehicle that they perform what they're supposed to do. Then Hashem says, Va'ani avarchem, according to Rabbi Kiva, that's the Pasuk, I give the bracha. But it's even more than that. It's actually, it's amazing. The Torah brings down that we learn from a Pasuk, they say, Amar lehem b'kol ram. And the Torah brings down from Yushalmi that says, b'kol ram doesn't mean say the b'chus in an elevated voice. It says, B'kailai shal ram, together with the call of the one, Ram Haida, the one who is high and elevated, HaKadosh Baruch Hu. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says the bracha together with the kainim. That's how what the Rishalmi says. So if you think about it, it's awesome that a Birgos kainim is a direct bracha from HaKadosh Baruch Hu to us. It's not just a, a postcard. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a letter. It's, it's not even a, a recording. It's a direct, the B'kailai shal ram. We don't hear it, but obviously Hashem is there. So amazing. So that's the bracha. So then I started to ponder, you know, so you figure the bracha from God would be chock full of, you know, just overflowing with bounty, you know, parnasa and, and gesund and, and, and success in learning and children and, and you know, all things based on Mikdash. And you look at the psukim, you look at the psukim, and uh, like, I, like uh, I, I was thinking, you know, everyone goes through Chaim Kineski. And generally, unless you have some sort of a super connection or whatever it is, or he senses, you know, you're special, he gives the, the tradition. You ever heard this before? Bua? Anyone know what Bua is? Bua? It's, it's really odd. But he go to him and he'll go, Bua, Bua, Bua. Bracha <laughs> v'hatzlacha. It's an abbreviation of Bracha v'hatzlacha. Beis vav hey. That's how you abbreviate Bracha v'hatzlacha. Bua, Bua. And so he says, his son tried to explain it once that, you know, Rebbe Chaim is a man of uh, minimal words. He, he spends maximum time. Everything is measured by him, and even a few extra syllables. So, Bua is the Bracha Bracha Hatzlacha. So, if, if you look at the Birchus Kainim and you look at it objectively, uh, yeah, Shayna Bracha, it's, it's like a general Bracha. It's a, it's a, it's a Bua Bracha. What is it? Yorah uh, Hashem Yishmecha. Oh, yeah, Hashem should bless you and preserve you. Yorah Hashem Panavelecha. Hashem should sign his countenance to you. What does it mean to sign your countenance to you? That he, he smiles at you. Rashi says, uh, Hashem smiles at us. But what does that mean? And that gives you favor. He spoke about that. And you Hashem So Hashem should turn his face to you and he'd give you peace. It's It's not a very exciting bracha. I'm sure that there's uh, many Mepharshim and Majoshim. Of course there is. But Rashi, and this is what, what, this is what I want to uh, whittle it down to. Rashi whittles it down very simple, even though there's many, many Midrash and many, many Chazal in interpreting the details of this bracha, he breaks it down to three things. Yivarech Hashem Yishmarecha is Parnasa. Hashem will bless you with Nechosim, Yishmarecha, and he will preserve it, protect, protect, protect it and preserve it. Yeah, okay, Hashem will give you Parnasa and you won't lose it. You'll have your barn, you'll have your cattle, you'll have you know, your cars, you'll have your business. Hashem will protect. That's one bracha. The next bracha is merely that Hashem will sign. Hashem will show you. We spoke about this all week. Panim uh, a smiling face, uh, a face of panim uh, tzuhuvais, an enlightening, a radiant face. 
And we can not give you favor. And then the last bracha, very simple. Yisha Hashem Pana Ve'lecha. Yisha Hashem Pana Ve'lecha simply means it's all Rashi's and elaborate. The only, this whole Pasuk, Rashi obviously was trying to give us some sort of sense. Yich Baish Kasei. That Yich uh, Baish Kasei. That Yich Baish Kasei. Hashem will, will control his anger. Control his anger. Okay, nice bracha. This is the bracha that you're waiting. The one bracha in the Torah that Hashem others on his own, I mean, the words of Torah fill the brothers, but one that Hashem comes down and says it together with the Kahinim, and he gives us the bracha, this is the bracha of all brachas, and it's really pretty passive. It doesn't, doesn't seem to be so exciting. So, so what does it mean? And, Yichai, and besides, if Hashem in the previous passage promises you, he's going to give you a favorable countenance, and give you favor, and then he says, and by the way, you know, I'm not going to get angry at you either. <laughs> you show me a, 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 a brilliant, happy face. And then suddenly you tell me, okay, Yichvash Kasai. So w- what's going on over here? So now, uh, th- there's a lot of discussion on this. Let's see if I remember. I, I forgot to bring the sources. I came a little rushed. But uh, th- th- there's many, many uh, discussions, many uh, opinions, both in Midr- Midrashaic sources and, you know, Tanaitic sources. And... Um, <laughs> in the Rishonim and <clears throat> Kabbalistic, and in fact, the Medrash, the Medrash uh, says, uh, the Medrash says um, that um, um, there are three places where it's it, the bracha bears kind of is of Arhu. See if I remember, there are three places where the Avos use the phrase uh, Kai. Avram Vina said, "Vani vahanar nelcha at Kai." That's the first Kai, and then, and then the Kai. By Yitzchak Avinu, I'm just trying to remember where it is. There's a passage by Yitzchak Avinu where it also says the phrase uh, Kai. I just have to remember where it is. And there's another passage, Kai Semel Beis Yaakov. That's one passage. Or Kai Oma Avdecha Yaakov. There's a different gear. So, but Ra- 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 Yaakov also used Kai. Where's the other Kai by Yitzchak? It's 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 um, it's uh, fleeting my mind. But anyway, there are three pesukim says Kai, and there's a correspondence between Avram and Yaakov. And if you look in the Balturim, he goes to town. On showing the relevance in the psukim, and there are many others. There's a famous sefer from a Rishon who's a big makubal rabbi the Rakeach, and others that go to town on this. So the three psukim, the three psukim represent Avram Yitzchak and Yaakov. So I was thinking like this. This is what I think. This is my my chizuk for tonight. You know, I was thinking. You know, obviously this bracha has to has something in it. Has to contain something in it that's inspiring, something that's the key to success in life. And, uh, and, and, you know, we give this bracha, we spoke about it also, this is the bracha we give to our children. This is a bracha, even though there's a whole question, can you give it to your children? It's a bracha that belongs to the kainim. What are we doing? I mentioned that also, it's a big discussion in, in the Paiskim, how we do that. And some say, it's only if you do it with your hands. And others say, only if you portray it as a kainim. But the bracha, you can't say, it. whatever it is, but we use that bracha. So there must be something, there must be something about children and uh, that's specific to this bracha. So I was thinking that, you know, there are three things that every human being needs in order to go forward in life. And otherwise they fall apart. Otherwise they fall apart. The first one is a person has to feel that he has his material needs met. A person is impoverished and feels uh, he, he's missing. He doesn't have what he needs, his, his needs. Could drive a person insane. They would drive a person to do crazy things. So a person needs the most basic and even it's just so with a child. The child needs to know that you know, that he has his food and he has his bed and a lot, a lot as he gets older and these other things, but the most basic need, and it just grows as we go on. In order to have satisfaction in life, you need to have the needs met, your needs met, the physical needs. Then the next, the next level is, and that's, and that I think is Avram Avinu. Avram Avinu is the one who taught the world that Hashem is the most benevolent uh, creator and he gives everything we need. And even though obviously, um, you know, as, as he taught, you know, I don't need anything. I don't need to be, I don't need anyone to, to give me and I am indebted to them. Whatever I have, I have. I don't need more than I need. Avram Avinu taught the world to appreciate what we have. He taught them the concept of the, the Kel Elyon, the Kainu Shemayim Varetz, HaKash Baruch Hu gives us. And, and, and really what he taught the world was that when you feel you're missing something, it's because of your la- lack of the proper prescription on your lenses to be able to see the world in front of you. But Hashem, who's the ultimate provider, gives us exactly what we need. And that's how Rami lived his life. And he represents the chesed, the chesed of Hashem, and I'm appreciating it and carrying it forward. And that's provision. And that's what he did. And Rami, he took care. He, he tried to 
uh, preserve as much as he could, whether it was saving his nephew or saving Sadaim, he emulated Hashem to try to give people what they needed, you know, the, that they should survive and have a life. That was, that's Havram. That, that's the basic need. The second need that a person needs, a child especially, and, and it expands as you, go, as you get older. A child needs to know that they have a parent that cares about them and loves them. <laughs> if a child grows up not knowing that, uh, not feeling that there's someone there caring for him, or was concerned that, you know, that concept that uh, is, is, is driven home to a child, he knows he grows up because that builds his confidence, that builds his self-esteem, that builds his ability, his courage to go forward. He knows that there's someone looking after him, which of course it emulates Hashem. It's all, it's all a reflection of that. But our, the parent who is Bimkaim in a sense, the agent of Hashem, has to give that sense of, of, of confidence and, and, and knowledge. Your person knows I'm something, uh, someone cherishes me, someone's concerned for me. When you have that, you can go forward in life. Children who lack it because of whatever strife in the home or, or, this, or, or confrontation or, or single, whatever, illness, whatever it is, they suffer and, and they grow up crippled, uh, crippled emotionally. That's the second thing. And, and the third thing that we need is that we have to know that even when we mess up, that uh, the people in charge of us, the people caring for us are tolerant. They understand us. They don't just write us off. Tolerance. The child sees a parent may provide or may be there in concern, but he's intolerant, then also the child is defeated. And that's true about every single human being. And, and uh, I wrote this up, you'll be able to read it in, in the bulletin, that, you know, what's, what's going on? We have a, a terrible situation arose in America where um, because of an act of brutality, uh, you know, obviously an act of brutality, so they triggered a raw nerve. So we're not talking about the crazies who, who loot. It's a minority. It is as, as much as it looks like the whole United States went crazy, and there's certainly thousands of them, but they're a small minority. Not every, 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 every member of, uh, you know, of the society is out to do that. But it, it, provoked, it provoked a certain uh, vulnerability that, that a certain segment of a society feels. And if you think about it, what are, they, what are they reacting to? Because every human being has to have a sense that they're provided for. And again, without going into the politics, are they guilty, they're not guilty, it's not the point. It's too complicated, it's a, it's a very complicated, but the end result is there are people out there and segments, significant segments of society who feel that they're cheated. They don't have, they don't have the basic minimum. They don't have, they don't have homes, they don't have food, they don't have, they, they don't have the, the things that most people have and they feel that they're lacking. And that's one thing that drives a person to, to insanity and to be driven to do crazy things. And the second thing that they don't have they don't feel that people really appreciate them or care about them. They feel it's a history that goes back to slavery and it hasn't been uprooted completely. And of course, there are those who pull themselves up by the bootstraps and obviously have risen above the challenges. But the end of the day is there's a large segment and we're not judging them, not, that's not the purpose here. But to realize when a person feels that they're just isolated and they're not appreciated, they're just a nothing, that will also drive a person to lose his humanity. And the third thing is intolerance. And you know, the brutality or even when they do, okay, obviously some are real criminal elements, we're not talking about them, but the intolerance and the, the bias and, and the racism and, and, and the hatred that stems from large parts of society towards the underprivileged. And again, we're not getting into the, the uh, anthropology of it or whatever it is you wanna call it. The, the, the social study of it, but that's the bottom line. And when you lose those three elements, then chaos erupts. And it, it, it can be on a personal level and chaos within a human being. It can be a chaos within a family unit, a child who feels he's missing that. It could be in a community and it could be the world. It could be global. That's really what it is. And I think that each one of the Avais represents, so Avram Avinu represents the provider. He was the provider. Yitzchak, if, I saw this in the Shem Shmuel, I discovered this. I thought of it, but I confirmed in Shem Shmuel. Avram Avinu got angry. There were times when he got angry. There were times when he says he was upset. Yaakov Avinu got angry. And then Rachel got angry a few times. He reacted. Yitzhak Avinu never gets upset. He's never frustrated. He rolls with the punches every time. It, it, it's it's uh, Yishmael, you don't hear any reaction. Uh, Avshal, uh, um, um, Avimelech, Avimelech and the Plishtim, no reaction. They plunder his wells, he works hard, he, and nevertheless, he just keeps on going to the next, 
moves to the next neighborhood. No fights, nothing. Ya- Yitzhak Avinu is the, it seems like the pacifist. There's no reaction. The Esav, he deals with it. Uh, let's try, you know, I'll show him some love. I love him. And even though he obviously uh, did, uh, was an errant child, but, but he never lost it. And, and then finally, <clears throat> and then the, 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 earlier in the Akedah, no reaction. Okay, Abishta wants to, you know, give me my soul. That's what I'll do. How does that happen? How do you, how do you, and that's the second shot that he saw, and we spoke about this the whole week, about seeing the smile of God all the time. You could see it and sense it when he's smiling on you, but even through the clouds, if you sense that God is peering through and looking at you, as the Pasuk says, and the second Pasuk, which corresponds to, to, to Yitzchak Avinu, Yara Hashem Pana Ve'lecha, Yara Lecha Panim Seichak, that Seichak also is a Yitzchak, Seichak, he was a man who was able to take it, everything with him in me, because if you really see the Yad Hashem, and you, not some you know is the Yad Hashem, you see Hashem behind everything, you sense that calm, concern, he's there taking care of me. If this is what I need to do, that's what I need to do. If you feel that security, and you feel that sense of belonging, and you're not isolated, and you know that someone's concerned for you, and, and, and he appreciates you, then you have no doubt that whatever's happening is ultimately for my good. And that's why he never reacted, no matter what happened. Yitzchak Avinu, despite him being the Yitzchak, the Gura, but Gura also means that he can, you know, ward off any emotions, because when you see God, every moment of staring you in the eyes with a smile, even through the clouds, then there's no, that's, that's Yitzchak Avinu. And that's what he brought to the table to, to our, our Neshama. And Yaakov Avinu, although he had some troubles and he reacted, but at the end of the day, no one had to deal over and over again with disappointment and frustration and surprises that he didn't expect. And yet, if you look through it, he did get upset. He was a human and he, more, he was more human than Yisrael, I guess, in his emotions. But he always went the extra mile. and He always was able to control himself. He was angry at Shimon and Levi. And he, t- he, ca- he castigated them, and eventually he even a- 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 addressed it by the brachas, but he, 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 what became of them, Shimon Levi, he knew that there was something in for them. He never it was intolerant and just chucked them. Ruvain, even though he had to take the bachar away from him, but uh, Ruvain, you know, also he, he, he gives him a bracha and he attests to his, to his qualities, even though he addressed his weaknesses, but he didn't discard him from the family, and, and, and so on and so forth, and even how, he, how Yaakov Inu deals with Lavan. And the Raman brings down that he's the epitome of loyalty to a to a, an employer, and even though even though he 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 made him trouble time and again, deceiving him a uh, hundred times over the years that he worked for him, and that yet nevertheless, yichbeish kasei, yichbeish kasei, and that's that that tolerance that he exhibited not only to those around him, whether it was a love on and the like, until one point he had to leave, but even then he confronted him, he dealt with it. And then his children, and Yaisef, the contentious, and he says, Shomar Sadavar. He knew it wasn't good, but he knew there was something going on, and he was able to contain himself. Shomar Sadavar. He went, he, it's low. And, and then again, with each episode, with each one of the children, Kaivish Kasei. So it's another element in, in what we need that, you know, even when we mess up, we know we have a parent, or we have a God, and the parent who represents that, that Hashem is tolerant, and he understands us. And he's Kaivish Kasei. Yisa Hashem Pan Lecha, Yisem Shalom. So I think. This is what the Birch Kainim is probably, Hashem knows what we need. And in order to survive in life, of course, he'll give us all the other details in between. But we have to realize and live our lives. And we have to realize that when we emulate Hashem's Midas and Hashem uh, in turn, it's a Midas and And that's what the world needs. We, like I said, we're the vehicle by which the, we're going to promote the Ratzon Hashem in the world. The Yor Hashem Lecha is supposed to be encompassed the entire world. But it has to come through us. But if we do it, at least within our homes, within our shuls, within our communities, within our associates, and we create the energy and the, the warmth, then of course, then Hashem will be Yivrech Hashem Yishmerech, Yor Hashem Pana Velecha, Yichonech Yis Hashem Pana Velecha, Shalom Shalom Shalom. I think that's, that's something for you to think about. And I like, I thank everyone for coming, even though it's a small, uh, intimate crowd, but uh, it, it means a lot to me, that uh, loyal, loyalty means a lot, and have a chance to share my deepest uh, emotions and thoughts that, uh, you know, I, I, unfortunately, you know, I don't, I, I usually do it several times over Shabbos. I miss it terribly, even though it's not bad, but I'm getting tired of vacation, <laughs> being home. And uh, I, I don't sleep late, I should tell you. I don't sleep late. 
even, even though I just can't. I'm, I'm in the over 60 club. Can't sleep late if I tried. And uh, it's great. I mean, Shabbos nice with my family. It's, it's different. It's the less pressured. And, you know, I see a civil lining, but still, I miss it terribly. And uh, that's it.